How are we doing? I clicked the wrong thing then, it went straight to the table rather than me. Hello, welcome to Dr Chip's Daily Dose and what a treat we have in store today on the Daily Dose. Quite literally, we're going to be making our own treat. We're going to be making instant ice cream and the cool thing is we're going to be using science to do it. So uh, before we get into that, we're going to do things in a slightly different order this morning just so that it works out timing wise. But before we get into our experiment, a couple of things to do first of all. Number one, welcome anybody that's watching for the first time. When I show you the showcase blog from yesterday, there are loads of people that tuned in for the first time yesterday. Uh, so welcome to them. Uh, welcome back. Thanks for sharing your work. It's fantastic. Uh, People that are joining us for the first time this morning, hello, welcome to you. Uh, you can send, as you'll find out in just a second, your work in to me at the email address here. Um, once you've had a go at this today, it's a great experiment, um, and I will put your work up on the showcase blog for people to see. Um, but yeah, we are going to do things slightly differently this morning because we need a little bit of time for this. I know it said instant ice cream and now I'm saying we need a bit of time, which is a bit of an oxymoron. But uh, we don't need a lot of time. But for the reaction to happen, or the change of state rather than a reaction to happen, we need sort of five, ten minutes or so with our ice cream. So I'm going to do the experiment first. Um, then, whilst the experiment is working away and we're creating our ice cream, I'm going to jump onto the showcase blog, share everybody's uh, wonderful work from yesterday where we looked at the um, rockets and explored the friction and air resistance. We've got some cool videos in slow-mo of people firing their rockets. Absolutely eight. Um, and then... Of course, I'm going to reveal the answer to the riddle from yesterday. The riddle was, what belongs to you, but other people use it more than you do? Hmm. So if you didn't uh, email in, do have a think throughout today's dose. Do I know the answer to that? What belongs to you, but other people use it more than you do? Now, I'm just going to move these flowers, because every time I keep leaning back, I nearly knock them off. Let me move those there. Okay, so one thing I will do before we go on to the experiment is do the register because we've got loads of people that said, can you give me a shout out on the register this morning? And of course I can if you want your name shout out on the register. If you haven't been able to send work in for the showcase blog, but you still want a shout out, just send me an email and I will give you a shout out. So these people, good morning, Amber and Lexi. Good morning to you. I think for one of the first times you've tuned in. Good morning to anyone that's tuning in from St. Bede's Catholic Junior School in Widnes, Cheshire. Uh, hello to you. I think you were tuning in yesterday as part of the Great Science Share, and lots of you are now tuning in uh, for Tuesday and for a Thursday as well. So hello to you. We've got Dave and George, regulars, tuning in. We've got Joseph Wainwright. Hello to you, Joseph. Uh, we've got Abdullah and Mustafa. Um, and Abdullah Mustafa, uh, your mum sent me an email and I've got to, uh, when I see you, I've got to have a chat with you because your mum's email made me laugh. Their mum's a computer scientist and a computer scientist is always looking for patterns in what they're doing and thinking of how they can automate things. And their mum's thought of a way of automating getting their names on the register and it made me chuckle because it, she was thinking like a true computer scientist. And last but not least... Uh, Bertie's emailed in to say, can I say happy birthday to her sister Olivia, who is 17 today. Happy birthday to you. I think we're going for the Adamson hat trick today because Bertie's setting the riddle. Uh, Olivia, shout out to you for your birthday. And later on in this dose, I'm going to be sharing with you uh, their sister Lexi's fantastic blog and website with recipes and she's uh, uh, put a special recipe on there for us to extend what you can do with uh, ice cream making. She's put a, an ice cream recipe up there so I'm going to share that with everyone at the end of the day. But happy birthday um, Olivia, 17, really cool age, you get to drive and you can get your micro lights license. Uh, there we go, I'll just plant that seed. So happy birthday to you. Right, okay, let's go for it. Let's make some instant 
Uh, ice cream. Right, what you need for this one is you need some flavoured milk. I've gone for chocolate milk, which is going to give me chocolate flavoured ice cream. Uh, you need uh, some salt. You need quite a bit of salt. Not, not all of this amount, but six sort of tablespoons. You need a fair bit of salt. I should have probably put that on the instructions. I'm sorry. Uh, you need some ice cubes. I've got my ice cubes in my washing up bowl down here. Um, and you need quite a few ice cubes. And then I've got, uh, just to break the ice cubes up, if required. And then you need two sandwich bags. Now, you need one smaller type of sandwich bag. Uh, I've gone for one about that size. And the important thing is that that one needs to be able to fit in fairly comfortably with room around the side into your larger sandwich bag. And, and this larger bag, I mean, it could be a carrier bag, actually. Um, although carrier bags have holes in them and it might get a bit messy, but it's just a bag. We're going to put the ice in that one, and this is going to sit inside. I did say, if possible, so I said this to my wife. I said, the small one, can you make sure it's got one of the Ziploc really secure tops? And the big one, it doesn't matter. But she got it the wrong way around. So my big one here is really secure and the small one isn't. But I haven't said anything to her because she would have said, go get your own sandwich bags then. And she'd be right. So anyway, we won't worry about that. So uh, first step first. Now, I think this is one you can follow along with me as I do this uh, live if you want to. Or you can watch me do it and then in your own time watch the video back and have a go at yourself. Um, but... Let me just talk to you before we, we start this a bit about the science because you might have noticed or heard or seen even in the winter months when uh, the weather gets very cold and it's wet and we're worried about ice forming on the roads which is where water freezes and you should all know that water freezes at what uh, temperature? Oh yes I heard it, zero degrees. So um, water, as you cool it down, when it reaches zero degrees, it freezes and forms ice. Now, ice can be very slippery, linking to our lesson yesterday on air resistance being a form of friction. Ice, when you have ice covering a surface, the friction, what we call friction coefficient, we won't go into it too much detail, but the friction is minimal. So things slide over it easily. And that's why it can be very dangerous on roads for cars, because you can lose your ability to grip on the roads and you can slide off. Um, so you might have seen gritters putting, spreading salt onto the roads or a, in your school you might, as we have at Consul Lane caretaker, um, Darren, hello to you if you happen to be watching, and he will go and get into school first thing and he'll put this salt, this grit salt mixture out onto the paths um, anywhere where we don't want this ice to form and it to be really slippery. But why? Or how, rather, does that work? Why salt? How does that work? Well, salt actually lowers the freezing temperature. So when you have a water-salt combination, the water then doesn't freeze at zero degrees. It freezes at a lower temperature. So when it's cold outside, and if it is, say, minus one, it won't freeze because it needs to get colder than that now for it to freeze. Okay, so that's what it does. Now, we're going to use that science here a little bit. Um, so let me start, and then uh, when we get to adding the ice in and the salt, we'll link back to the science and we'll explain what is going to happen here. So first things first. Let's get, uh, and do I need to go to dual camera? Uh, yeah, let's go dual a little bit. Here we go. So first things first, we're going to pour some of our flavoured milk into our smaller sandwich bag. Now, I'm not going to do loads here because the more you add, the longer it does take to make your ice cream. And obviously, I want to do it within the time we've got available. Um, da -da 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 -da. So I'm just going to pour in probably about that much and I'm going to hold up and show you how much I've done here. I'm going to seal this up. 
When you seal it up as well, try and get the air out of it, okay, and then seal it. So rather than having it sealing it and having a massive bag. So let me hold it up to, oh, look, can you see there how much I've put in? It's kind of just in the corner there, like so. Do, 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 do. There we go. Okay, now you can do a little bit more because you've got a bit more time at home uh, than I have. Now, um, what I did when I tested this, it worked well, uh, hold it like that with all the milk down there and then as I say, squeeze the air out. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Open up a little tip. Of course you can't squeeze the air out if it's closed. Squeeze the air out the top and then seal it. Excellent. Okay, now put that to side, the side one minute and then... Put your lid back on your chocolate. Oh, let's, let's have a sip of that. Mmm. Do you know what? I've never really been into flavoured milk, but I think I could start. That is lovely. It's like, you know, when you have cocoa pops and the milk goes all chocolatey. Right, next thing we're going to do is get our big sandwich bag. And we are going to put our ice cubes in it. And we let me show you how many we're going to put in. Okay, so these are going in. Um, even more, another handful. I'll hold it up at the end so you can see. The less is not more here. More is more. So let's get and try and get the ones that are yeah a little bit more. So I'm probably going to use about a third of this bag. So if you need to make a few more ice cubes before you do this, go for it because you will be rewarded for it. Right, there we go. So can you see? Let me hold that up. Nice load of ice cubes. So that we, we want enough so that when we're putting our chocolate milk in there, in that bag, okay, inside, it's going to sit down and be sort of well covered by the ice cubes. Right, now, back to the science. Here we go. This is the cool bit. What we are going to do now is we're going to add six tablespoons of um, salt into the bag of ice cubes. And that, as we said before, is going to lower the freezing point. Okay? That means the ice is then going to be above its freezing point, so it's going to start to melt. And melting requires heat energy. And where is it going to take that heat energy from? My chocolate milk. It is going to pull all of the heat energy out of my chocolate milk. And it is going to pretty much instantly, like within a few minutes, freeze the chocolate milk into ice cream. So now when you do this, please... Uh, and I've left it over there, so I'm going to go and get it. Use gloves or a towel when you're holding this because it gets really cold. Uh, so here we go. A liberal serving of salt. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. There we go. So we've got loads of salt in there. Going to just give it a little bit of a shake around, like that. And then we are going to take our chocolate milk and we are going to place it right in the middle there, like so. We are going to place the ice around it, like that. Now, I, uh, this is going to get too cold for my hands, so I'm going to go out the back here into my kitchen and get a tea towel. One second, here I go. Okay, I'm back, I'm back. Right, so I'm going to... Now, you can, you'll can. you be able to see uh, in the bottom... Let's go, I don't know why I keep leaning up to that one. That's the whole reason I've got this. So we'll be able to start to see the ice cubes melt. Okay, you want to keep giving it a little bit of a shake. Make sure that's... Just move that salt around. And as the water then, that salty um, solution starts to... Uh, as the ice cubes start to melt, forming a salty solution, we want to move that water of salty solution around so it covers the other ice cubes, lowers their freezing temperature, causes them to start to melt, and the whole thing um, just gets colder 
and colder. Let's get that right in there. And then that is going to freeze our chocolate milk into instant ice cream. Right, so I'm gonna leave that going now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump onto the showcase blog. In the background, you might hear a little bit of rustling noise like that, but that is just me uh, making sure that this is working. And I hope it does, I do hope it does. I tested it and it worked brilliantly, but when you're doing something live, you never know. So, okay, whilst that's going, let's jump onto the showcase blog and share all of your wonderful work from yesterday. So, here we go, here we go, here we go. Right. Oh, my hands are getting really, really cold with that tea towel. It does get really cold, so be careful. Let me wrap it on the tea towel, put it on my knee there. Right, okay, so showcase blog time yesterday was Rockets Explorer, well, we talked a little bit about gravity and the Vomit Comet, Comet and how you can get zero G in the Vomit Comet. And then we talked about friction and air resistance and you had to go at making these rockets with different shaped nose cones to explore how that affected how far they flew. So, uh, first of all, Shane, Excellent effort, Shane. You've uh, correctly uh, made your two rockets there with the different size nose cones. Um, and we've got a video here of you flying them, I think. Oh, I tell you what, I'm going to pull my microphone out in case there's any audio. It might go quiet briefly. Yes, you can. Don't think that one had any audio, but excellent. You showed us, and you found similar to what a lot of people found, that actually the wider nose cone didn't fly so far, and that's what I was expecting you'd find, because it has greater friction because of the cross-sectional area. Uh, Abdullah and Mustafa, uh, that is actually, by the way, what Abdullah looks like in real life. I teach Abdullah, and um, that is uh, his face there. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, Maddie, I don't teach you, but uh, you've got a wonderful blue face there. Uh, but no, thank you to both of you for covering your faces up. That's what we need to do. Um, Maddie, in fact, I think it might have been one of your first times tuning in. So welcome. Uh, fantastic investigation. Wrote up your investigation. Did a bit of decoration on your rockets there as well. Um, we've got Jess Clay. Thumbs up, Jess Clay. And we've got a video of you launching yours. Here it goes. Whoa, I'm guessing that might have been the, the pointy nose cone because that flew absolutely fantastically. Uh, Beatrice, Bertie, you've got, now I love the names of yours. So we've got the Bertie Blaster and the Bertie Disaster. And I am presuming that it's the Bertie Disaster with the wide cone that only flew a short distance and the Bertie Blaster with the very pointy slimline cone uh, nose cone that went the furthest and you did one in between as well excellent um thank you for sharing those with me we've got oh sammy i don't know why your picture didn't come out there i'm sorry about that let's watch your video instead we've got Zam sammy firing it across the room there excellent and we've got logan and caleb as well i think one of the first times tuning in for you boys so uh, welcome one video there and another video as well or was this an explanation, maybe? Have I not got my sound up? No, I haven't. I'm so sorry. There we go. Excellent. The Welsh boys um, also found the same. Mum was saying One, that they... One, two, three, blow. Oh, they didn't work. Excellent. And uh, Mum was saying that you also discovered the same, that they uh, the pointier cone went further. Love that roller coaster in the background, by the way. Um, Isabel and Austin, age 10 and 7, love your rockets. Uh, thank you, NS, NHS. Very topical at the moment. And I'm presuming it's Tabitha your cat. Is that right? Or I love Tabitha the cat. Um, and you've written it up as well. You've done a proper table to measure how far they flew. That is fantastic. We've got Joseph Wainwright. Um, who's actually... Trying to hit the target on on that one. Very, very good effort, Joseph. Jack, 
Thorley, another regular, um, with his rocket there, and let's watch him firing it. Oh, man. Excellent. Now, that was the uh, wide nose comb one, so as expected, that didn't fly particularly far. I'm just checking on my, uh, my chocolate ice cream here. Oh, yes, perfect. It's coming on nicely. There we go. Um, and we've got Jenny with a little video that she made about the experiment. Haha, <laughs> love it! With the clap at the end and thumbs up. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, we've got Reggie. Uh, I think you're firing it at someone there, Reggie, as well. Who was that you were firing at? Uh, we've got Wisley. Wise Lane? Apologies, you're going to have to tell me how to say that name. Uh, in slow-mo, did you see that flying through the frame there? Fantastic. Uh, can you see how many I got sent yesterday? This is amazing. Jessica with the tape route measure out to measure who, which one went furthest. Fantastic. Inez, um, who's resorted to throwing hers, I think. But that's absolutely fine. You throw them, Inez. I'm measuring them. And there's definitely one going further than the other there. We've got Amber and Lexi. Love that video. Oh, yes. We've ca captured that perfectly. Let's watch that one again. Here we go. Look at that launching out. Fantastic. And... Uh, last one, we've got Emma Fitchford as well, who I think also was one of the first times joining us. Um, so well done to you for making your rocket. And I wanted to share these as well. Uh, they just came in yesterday, even though they're for the day before. Don't no name with this one, but a beautiful scratch program. I only ran it, uh, I ran it for quite some time and it still hadn't finished. I think it was going to go around and add smaller petals around all of that larger flower. Absolutely brilliant. And Mustafa and Abdullah, well done to you as well for doing that one. Mum said that you were um, enjoying doing the coding on that. Right, let's come back then to this instant ice cream. Let me just check. All is streaming okay. Yes, it is. Instant ice cream. That's not being quite as instant as I would hope today. Come on, right. So let's see how it's getting on. Let's have a look up here. Perfect. Okay. Right, let's go to the uh, both there. Now, I'm pressured with time today because I've got to get the uh, daily dose finished. Um, but you can take a little bit more time with your ice and your salt. But let me just show you how quickly this happens because it has worked already for mine. If I pull the uh, chocolate uh, milk out, you will see, and I'll just put that to one side. Do be careful where you put that salty now, it will continue to melt. Can you see that actually the bag has now taken the shape of where it's frozen? This is actually, can you hear that? Of course you can't hear it because I haven't put your microphone back in. Ooh, well done for remembering that one. Test, test, test. There we go. Back. See if you can hear this. It is actually hard at the bottom. It has turned into ice cream in that short space of time. All you need to be careful of now is not getting the salty flavoured mixture on the outside onto the inside. So I am going, oh no, I can't use that spoon because that's the spoon I use for the salt. I'll tell you what, I'll just wipe it on. There we go. I didn't do that. Okay, so let's have a look in here. Look at this. We have got some lovely... Oh, it's so frozen, I can't actually get it out. Here we go. We have got chocolate ice cream in under, that was about eight minutes, I think. Let's give it a taste. Mmm. Oh, that's lovely. Well, 
That is very nice. And it's really cold because it is really nice chocolate ice cream. So there we go, instant ice cream for you today. Now, as I mentioned briefly at the beginning, so I've got to have my ice cream now. Mm. Oh, I'm getting brain freeze. Oh, lovely. Um, one of our daily doses that tunes in pretty much every day, Lexi, has started a really cool blog sharing recipes because she loves cooking, she loves food. Um, and I reached out to Lexi, I sent her a message and I said, I'm gonna be doing this daily dose on making instant ice cream. Could you put a recipe on your blog to make ice cream, make it a nice simple one as well for the daily doses so that once they've had a go at this, they could also have a go at your recipe to make a, a different type of ice cream. It'd take a little bit longer, but it's probably gonna be a bit nicer than this one as well. Oh, this is, this is nice, but I'm sure Lexi's is even nicer. And she said, yeah, no problem, Dr. Chips. So let me show you the link, because I want as many of you as possible to have a go at making Lexi's ice cream as well, and then let me know how you got on. I will be definitely doing it. So let me show you where I have put the Link. So if we go back to drchips.weebly.com on the main page here under Tink it's like, Tinker Like It's Thursday, I have put a link to Lexi's awesome quick frozen yogurty ice cream. It will take you straight through to her page. So here is Lexi demonstrating, uh, well, some photos of her making it and the finished product looks absolutely lovely. Um, so this is another fairly simple recipe. With this one, all you need is some frozen fruit, some yogurt, some honey, and some vanilla essence. And it's a really simple four-step recipe. In fact, this set of specific instructions to get something done is a... Yes, I heard you shout, an algorithm. It is indeed. So really simple, put all the ingredients in a blender, whiz it up until smooth, pour it into a plastic box with a lid, and put in the freezer for a couple of hours and serve with your favorite toppings. And said, thanks you to Do thank you to Dr. Chips for asking for this recipe. No, thank you, Lexi, for providing it. So uh, please do get onto Lexi's blog, have a go at making this one, and also you can see all of our other recipes as well. There's some really cool ones in here, um, and lots of them come from her friends and family, I think. So uh, this is Jazz's Buttery Dal, or there were other, there was one on here as well that I quite fancied having a go at. Was it the carbonara? Yes, Malcolm's best ever carbonara. Now if that's the best ever carbonara, I need to give it a go. So there we go. Uh, that is a little, let me come back, a little bonus link today on the Daily Dose to get onto that wonderful blog of Lexi's and try her recipes out and let me know when you have done. Um, or you can give her page some likes as well. Right, okay, I think I'm going to have to finish up in just a second, but before I do, we've done, let me just check, we've done everything I need to do. We've done the showcase, yes we have. We've done the register, yes we have. Oh, Freddie and Thomas Metcalf said, how did I get my Lego man back? Um, we put a phone in it, and the phone had a GPS, and this is a picture of me and my friend Ian, where we tracked it on a computer, and we went across and found it in a field, and that is how we got it back. So I meant to tell you that uh, as well. Uh, and then finally, then the riddle. So the riddle from yesterday was, what is yours, but other people use it more than you do? And these people got it right. Miss Parks from Compsall Lane, Shane, Isabel, Jess Clay, and Grace Singh. The answer is your name. So it belongs to you, but other people use it more than you do. Um, so the riddle for today Again, set by uh, Brain Buster Bertie. Uh, which one? She sent me two. Which one should I go for? Oh, I think I'm, I like this one. What has branches but no leaves or a trunk? Hmm. What has branches but no 
leaves or a trunk. That's what you need to be puzzling about. I will see you next week on Tuesday for Computational Thinking Tuesday. Please hit like and subscribe. Go, oh, I get it wrong every time. Go to this website and put your email address in and tomorrow when I plan next week's session, I'll send you an email telling you what's coming up and what you need. Enjoy your ice cream, visit Lexi's blog, make her ice cream and have a fab weekend. Bye for now.